I want you to tell me um, about Too Cool for School mm-hmm. and your experience at Can and kind of how that led to uh, um, Super Dark Times. So we, okay, so Super Dark Times was conceptualized maybe about four or five years before we actually ended up making it. Ben approached me with the idea. We had been juggling ideas to make into a film. Um, we went for a walk because he had a dream that he wanted to talk to me about. And he basically kind of spieled the the kind of the middle of the movie, the core kind of inciting incident. And he's like, you know, as he was talking, he got more excited. And he basically was <laughs> saying, I think this is it. I think I should write this and you should direct it. Wow. And I'm like, hold your horses, you know, <laughs> but he, he went off and did it. He went in, like, he wrote a rough draft in like the span of like seven days or something like that. And then um, it was exciting and enticing. And he brought on his partner, Luke Piotrowski, and they did uh, a second draft and the film really started to take form, you know, and we started a note giving process. And then we attached Jet Steiger, graduate from SCAD. Um, and good friend and owner of Ways and Means. Um, as a producer, he bought the option over a steak dinner at the Antanas. And that was that, you know? And so we're like, we're going to make this movie. And then years pass, you know? And we're all growing in our respective fields. I'm shooting and directing when I can, little shorts on the side and stuff like that, all finding our way. And the movie kind of just gestates, right? Um, we kind of, every now and then, apply in a way, but at the same time, I wasn't fully attached to the idea of making this movie. Every, mm. every instance of, of some sort of, you know, um, how to say it, like every, I recall every instance of like a school shooting mm. would send like, you know, naturally a shiver through the whole process yeah. of making a movie like this. That's a bad, it's very much about like, you know, it, suburban violence and like yeah. teen violence. And, um, and the process naturally took, it's, it took time because ultimately we were trying, we were inexperienced feature filmmakers trying to make a movie that very little people, very few people wanted to make, you know, this is like, you know, <laughs> um, difficult themes, no star cast, you know, it's like, and like, you know, untested, uh, director. Um, it's like, good luck a little bit, you know, but, um, but we held on to it. And then, and then Richard Pete, um, also graduate from SCAD and owner of the production company neighborhood watch in New York, um, was vying for my attention and he reached out and, um, we started working together and we became really close friends as well. And Richard asked early on, he's like, what's up with this movie, Super Dark Times? And I was like... Uh, how, how early did you, you land know, on that title, by the way? Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> I, this, th- honestly, within the first draft that Ben wrote, I started writing down titles as potentials. Um, because I like, I'm, I'm of the mindset where I like to kind of have a title early on. I get you. Um, and even yeah, this is, this is funny, but it's true. The, the title font on the movie to this day was the, it was, I wrote that out. Mm. That's, it's the same thing. It's like, it's like a, a JPEG that I took from a picture yeah, and like, yeah. you know, so that's, yeah. that was, that was an early, yeah, that was in, that was from the onset pretty much. Yeah. Um, Richard Pete. Yeah. came on board asked about the movie what's happening with this thing we're like i don't know it's just kind of sitting around we'd like to make it but you know and richard just came off making blue ruin with jeremy Sonic. and yeah. so he was like kind of high on this adrenaline of being like we can do it man we can like make this thing you know yeah. we don't need much and i was enticed and i'm like okay but i got jet steiger over here who's already attached to this and as jet once told me you know a producer needs another producer like they need a hole in their head you know and so it's like <laughs> this is going to be hard to marry these guys together but i love Did them they know each other at much. the time not really okay. um they were aware of one another um but um not not per se and so i thought i'm like this could be very beneficial this could benefit the project in, in so many ways and i like the idea of having these two people that i love very much 
coming together to support this movie on different coasts. I think that's great. And so that process of kind of bringing them together was unto itself like a huge challenge that I had to really marinate and like kind of, you know, work with over time, but I did. Yeah. And um, Richard had the idea, Hey, let's do a short proof of concept. Jeremy did it for blue ruin. Um, and that could benefit this movie because at this point we had a very big treatment, like a lookbook deck that I had made. We How had big? How many pages? 42 something like that okay. um uh very detailed though um we had um about eight drafts of the screenplay we had all the stuff we needed except like a, a testament to making a movie that you know so to speak sure. so he's like let's do a short and i'm like okay but i don't want to just do a scene from the movie because if we end yeah. up making this movie how fucking boring just to reshoot that fucking scene that we already shot so let's do something that can exist that's part of this universe yeah, of super right. dark time, but can exist unto itself. Right. Like that's cool and interesting. So Ben had written a small kind of little, very, very thin, so to speak. And I'm not, not, not to say this is like a, no, it's just like a very simple um, story about this kid coming home and like porn playing in his house or something. I don't really really remember. <laughs> um, I don't remember and, and there was like a suspense element to it. Yeah. Um, I fleshed it out a bit um, and we had the idea collectively. I'm like, look, I'm going home for Thanksgiving. Let's just scout. I could scout in Pennsylvania. This would be great to shoot in Pennsylvania. Super Dark Times is always a Northeastern movie. So I'm like, I know where I'm from quite well. I know the landscape. It could be really inspiring and cool. We could shoot it in my family's house. No problem. Much to, much to their, you know, <laughs> chagrin or whatever. Like they, they you know, they allowed it. But, you know, we totally took over that fucking house. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, we kind of put this thing together real quickly. And following Thanksgiving, you know, we brought up a team of incredible people, Jet, Rich, Eli, um, and brought a bunch of friends over from New York, Ryan Dickey, Colin Alexander, uh, Abby Horton, um, uh, Patrick Parker, gosh, so many. Um, and the we just said yeah we kind of huddled in my home and in like a hotel complex for like four days uh we cast tristan lake labu out of la and uh esther um from los angeles as well and then we like kind of just shot this thing with yeah. no real uh expectation other than let's make this cool thing you know 10 11 minutes long planned for it shot it in a very specific way um shortly thereafter our friend matt hartfield passed away um and i remember that was like a real blow because matt was supposed to kind of help us on the movie um and i was home for the holiday and i needed to shoot a bunch of inserts for the movie and i remember just me and this red camera that i borrowed um from neighborhood watch and i was just shooting these inserts at my house to kind of fill in the gaps Ed Unitas cut the movie in LA like real quickly. And then Richard and Jet had the idea, like, let's send this off to can. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> like, good luck. And they did. And then I remember I was in um, Venice, Italy at the time, shooting something for a filmmaker named Oscar Boyson, who I love. And I was with Colin Alexander, our sound, a brilliant sound designer. And Basically, we got the word then and there that the movie was accepted into um, uh, Critics Week at Cannes, um, which was fantastic. Yeah. And, um, you know, shortly thereafter, we find ourselves in Cannes. And at this point, though, you know, we kind of were communicating with UTA um, and a couple of companies like XYZ um, about Super Dark Times. And so once we got to Critics Week, it really kind of opened how, the door. Sorry, how did, how, Beck, how yeah. did that kind of come about? Yeah. How did those conversations start to come about? Well, given that Jet had had you know come off of producing Lake Bell's feature film, right? Um, and Rich produced Blue Ruin. This they naturally opened doors for themselves. Ben and Luke had you know were working their way up the, with the WGA, writing other films as well. 
we all kind of started excelling a little bit yeah. in our, in our yeah. own fields, right? And so that naturally kind of opened more avenues of approach with this screenplay and this project. And now that we had this proof of concept as well, um, that helped, that only helped. And now that it went to can as well, that only helped even further. Yeah. And so Critics Week was really cool, you know, small, humble aspect of the festival, but it was cool nonetheless. Um, I mean, can is great when it's, when it's great. It's like fucking great, you know, <laughs> I mean, totally fun. Um, and it was, we met with UTA um, literally the day I got back from Cannes in New York City, uh, Richard, Pete and I, I mean, still like absolutely jet lagged and like, <laughs> you know, like hung over or whatever from that entire venture, like meeting at UTA um, and basically like, this is the movie we want to make and here's everything. And they're like, this sounds fucking cool and great. And, you know, we believe in you. Um, let's try to get this going. Let's like try to find some financiers for you. And we're like, great. And pretty much right thereafter, we started a six month process of meeting with different financiers. And at that point in time, it was very evident. It will became more evident, I should say, to myself and to Jet and Richard and the team entire, what kind of movie we wanted to make. Yeah. Um, and so it was much a vetting process for us as it was for the financiers. Is this something that they want to make? Right. And we were not shy about the type of movie that we wanted to make, you know, um, because we wanted to, if we we're going to do it, we wanted to do it the right way. Um, and the long and short of it is, you know, we found two fantastic co-financiers um, and that really believed in the project and really were predominantly hands off. And then as things kind of came to a head, I mean, I realized like, oh fuck, we're gonna like make this movie. And I remember I was with Richard and we were at a friend's wedding in Iceland and we were like a little wine drunk and we got into an argument because I was getting nervous about making this movie. And he's like, if you're so fucking nervous, why don't you go like storyboard the film or something? Just like work on it, like, you know? I'm like, I guess you're right. <laughs> and so I went, I, I flew back to Pennsylvania and I, I hung out, I like hold up, like I said, for like two months and I worked on the film and I really kind of had to come to a place where I'm like, this is going to happen. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so I better just like, you know, buckle up and decide right now, like, am I going to, am I going to do this thing? And if I'm going to do it, I really need to go all the way. <laughs> 